When non-technical entrepreneurs step into the no-code app development space, one of the common assumptions is that it's going to be easy, <laughs> is that they can just come into this space, use no-code tools with absolutely no relevant background, no previous knowledge, uh, never having built or launched an app before, thinking that they can just use no-code tools because you don't have to know how to code and just build and launch their app really, really easily. And unfortunately, what a lot of people find out is that that's just not the case. And this doesn't mean that you can't build your app. You definitely can. We help non-technical entrepreneurs uh, create their apps every single day. But there's a lot you have to know before you build your app and as you build your app. And if you don't know these things, then you're gonna run into some really common problems down the road with your app. And we see this happen way too often and it leaves people feeling a little bit defeated. Like maybe this no code space or the app space in general just isn't for them, even though they thought they wouldn't have to know how to code to do this. So what we're gonna talk about today are number one, the main problems we see people facing as they start building their apps when they don't have a technical background. And then we're going to go through what you need to know in order to just avoid those problems. And make sure you stick around until the end because I also have a free training that I wanna share with you that's actually gonna help you get started with your no-code app today. So first, if you're new around here, my name is Kristen and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help business owners and industry experts build custom apps to either start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. So let's talk about the three biggest problems that we see people run into when they come into this space, they come into the no code space, as a non-technical entrepreneur, and they just, you know, learn the tool that they want to use. So, so maybe they're learning Bubble, which is the platform that we use. And as they go, they kind of build their app, and they're they're kind of winging it as they go. And so they're hacking different things together. They're, they they sometimes come out on the other end with um, a Frankenstein-like app, if if that makes sense. And so the the main problems that come about when they go through that process is number one and and this is the most important thing is that once they finally um, launch their app if it ever happens they get really really bad feedback from their users nobody likes the app and this is for two reasons number one because the app probably doesn't work really well. And we're gonna talk more about this in just a minute, the more technical components. But number two, there is so much strategy involved in how you prepare your app for users and, and how you move into that feedback stage. And keep in mind that you know most people, their immediate goal is to just start making money with their app. But, the actual most important goal you need to have is getting feedback. And that feedback can come in a lot of different ways. But what you don't want to happen is because you have built your app in an incorrect way, and I'm talking both technically and from a strategic standpoint, you don't want to get to the other end. And you know maybe you have this really amazing app idea. This solution is in high demand but you come out on the other end with a product that nobody wants because you didn't follow a strategy. That's what we don't want to happen. We don't want you to get to the other end and just get really bad feedback because of that lack of strategy um, as you've built the app. So that's one of the biggest things that we see people uh, end up dealing with when they come into this space and they think, you know what, I just want to build my app on my own. I'm in the no code space. and so. I'm just gonna hit the, hit the ground running and go with it, right? And it, and it just kind of, I don't know, comes together along the way. So that's one of the biggest problems we see. And then the next biggest problem we see 
is that uh, these apps have really poor performance. If you have seen many no code apps, um, if you have seen examples out there, a lot of them perform really badly. In, in other words, they are slow, they're laggy, they're disjointed, um, they don't offer a very good experience, they just don't feel like they really work. And a lot of people think that this is just because of the platform that they're using. So they might say, oh, well, this platform just isn't very good to build your no-code app on. But what the real problem is, is that the app just hasn't been built correctly on that platform. And so when you come into this space and you think it's no code, so I don't need any help. I'm just going to do it on my own and wing it as I go. And then you come out on the other end with a really poor, poorly performing app. Um, you know, it's, you have to look at the app. You have to look at the structure of the app. You have to look at your database. You have to look at how you've created the logic. You have to look at the overall architecture of the app. There's just so much that goes into it. And so what we don't want to happen is for you to come out on the other end and have this really poorly performing app um, that again, gets you that bad user feedback or just ends up being something that you can't even put into users' hands because it just doesn't work. All right, so that's another really big problem we see um, when people don't come in with a plan and a process in order to build and launch their app. So the third biggest problem that we see, and this kind of just builds on those previous two, is that the app is just not scalable. All right, so when there's, there's no plan in place, there's no process being followed, there's no strategy for building this app putting it into the hands of users, oftentimes it ends up not being scalable. And when I'm talking about a scalable app, what I mean is an app that can grow its user base, so it can bring on more and more users, and one that you can grow in terms of feature sets and functionality, and with those two things, still have it perform well, right? So you, you want your app to be scalable. And what happens when there's no plan or strategy in place and when you're just kind of winging it as you go is you get to the other end and the app isn't scalable. So two ways that this is often uncovered is either you try growing the user base and the app breaks or you try growing the feature sets, the functionality and the app breaks. Okay. You don't want to be in the position where you're, you're starting to bring on your users and now you're stuck because the app won't scale and then you have to go back because what, what the problem is in that case, it's not some surface level thing that you can put a bandaid on and, and keep running with it. That's a root problem. When your app is not scalable, that starts at the core. So what happens in that case is you don't just have to backtrack and fix things. You have to backtrack a lot and re build things. And you don't want that to happen when you're finally at the point where you're bringing your users on board. And so those are the three big problems we see when people come into the space and then they have no plan, no process, no strategy to follow when they just um, think that it's no code and say, okay, I'm going to do it, do it on my own. And then they wing it as they go. All right. But there is a process that you can follow to help you avoid those things. And this is the process that we take our own clients through. So there are four main kind of ingredients that you can think of uh, when you're building your app and you want to avoid these problems, which you do. So the first is you have to have the right framework around your app. Now, I talked a lot about strategy and a lot of people come into this space thinking, okay, I just need to brush up on my technical skills. I just need to learn how to use this no code app building platform, and then I can be off to the races. But the reality is there is a ton of strategy involved in being able to correctly launch your app, being able to correctly build your app. So you have to lay the right framework first. And this means understanding for your particular app, for your specific app, because everyone's app 
is different, right? That's the point. You're building custom apps. So you have to understand the strategy for your specific app of which features you should build, when you should build them, how you should build them. The order really matters here. You also have to understand when you should get certain types of feedback and what type of feedback that should be. Again, your mind is probably on the, the revenue that you want to generate, but you can't get there until you go through those initial first steps. And if you skip those steps, then the resulting revenue is going to reflect that in a negative way. So you have to build strategy, essentially a roadmap around the phases you're gonna go through in order to build and launch your app and when you're gonna inject all these other components, right? The order is really specific here and you can look at order on two different levels. Number one of your overall app. What is your entire development strategy? And number two, when you break that down into the different phases and the different versions of your app, what order should you build each of those features in? How should you layer in the functionality, right? Because a big problem that a lot of people have, again, when they just jump into the space and start kind of building and winging it and they have no process, is that they start building everything at once or they start building the wrong features at the wrong time. And then because they've built things in the wrong order, features become really unstable because they don't have the correct foundation in place. So the strategy, this framework for your app is critical to its overall success. And the number two thing that you need to do, or the second ingredient that you need to keep in mind is that foundation. So I use this comparison a lot, but you can think about building your app like you would building a house. When you build a house, you have to lay a really strong foundation first. And if you don't, you're going to be facing long-term problems down the road. And these are really time consuming, really expensive problems to fix. And they're not the types of things that you can just put a bandaid on. If the foundation of a house is poor, if it's unstable, you might start seeing cracks appear in, in the frame of your house, right? On your walls or in your ceiling. And sure, you could cover those up so that you can't see them, but that's not fixing the root problem. In order to fix the root problem, you have to do a massive overhaul. The exact same thing is true of your app. And that's what I was talking about when we were going over uh, the problem of an app that doesn't scale, right? It's not a Band-Aid fix when your app isn't scalable. It starts at the core. And so you have to put the right foundation in place so that your app will be scalable, so that it will perform well, and so that you can actually bring users on board and then grow that user base. So you have to look at the overall structure of the app, the architecture of your app. You have to look at your database. This is really, really important. And that is one of the areas where most people go wrong. Everything starts at your database. And this really is the foundation of your app. And so if you don't get that right, then you're going to struggle later. So make sure that you have that proper foundation so that you can build on top of it in a way that is scalable so that you can grow, that you, you can grow your app and you can grow your business. All right, the third key ingredient you need to have in order to build this app is the, the correct functionality built in the correct way. So we talked about having the framework, about having those core foundational pieces, but now you have to start layering in the correct functionality on top of that. And you have to do this uh, in, again, going back to that strategy, in the right order, at the right time so that everything builds on top of the last component and that you have a reliable app. But you also have to make sure that the actual technical components are really clean and really concise because when you have a really poorly performing app, if you go in and look at the back end and you yourself as the app developer have a hard time even figuring out how to navigate it or how to find anything or even fix anything, that is a problem, or it's at least an indicator of a problem that you have now or a big problem that you will have down the road. So you have to make sure this functionality is all clean and concise and built in the right way, at the right time, in the right order, so that your overall app 
can expand in a really clean uh, and streamlined way. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about is then when you get to that stage of needing to expand your app. Okay, so you have that framework, you have the foundation, you've layered in this functionality. Now you have a core that is truly scalable that you can start bringing your users onto. But you have to know how to prepare it for those, for those users to come on board. Now, this means testing it in a number of different ways. You have to test from a developer's standpoint. So you have to test from the back end, but you also have to test from a user's standpoint. And the way in which you go through these two different um, testing phases is different because you're looking for different things, all right? So for the, the, from the developer's standpoint, you need to make sure that everything that we've gone over is in place. Okay, but from the user's standpoint, you have to make sure that they're able to use the app, that they can navigate the app, that the app really has a high level of usability because that's the only way you're going to get the correct feedback. Your app could actually be performing really well and you could have structurally built a really scalable app. But if you can't test it correctly from a user standpoint, or if you can't rather prepare it correctly from a user standpoint, then none of that could matter because from a user's standpoint, they could still be having a poor experience, which gives you really bad feedback on an app that otherwise is really, really uh, well built and really scalable. So you have to prepare to expand it in the right way, just as you have to lay out the strategy in the right way and create the app in the right way. So really, when you come into this space and you look at this as, you know, well, I'm using no code tools, so I, I can just learn how to use the tool and get going. You're putting yourself at risk of these problems, of not having that strategy, of having that poor performance down the road, of realizing that your app isn't scalable once you're finally ready to scale. But if you go through these, these four key ingredients that we talked about, creating that strategy, right, that framework, putting that proper foundation in place so that everything is actually scalable, layering in the proper functionality uh, in the proper way, and then preparing for it to expand so that you can actually move into those next stages, so that you can actually grow the app. If you can do those things, you will be able to uh, have just such a higher likelihood of reaching the business goals you're after, right? And, and that's really what we're aiming for here. You have these more granular technical goals that you need to reach, but at the end of the day, you're building your app so that you can create a business, so that you can grow your business, so that you can you know, enable a different lifestyle for yourself, whatever it may be. That's what we're going for. And so that's what we're trying to enable you to do by creating your app in the right way so that you can launch and then grow it in the right way too. So I also talked about uh, our free training that is going to help you get started with your app so much more quickly and a lot more correctly. So if you found any of this useful, we have a 75 minute completely free training and we're gonna take you through um, these initial steps so that you can get going with your app today. And if you've already started building your app, that's okay, you can come back, go through the training to make sure that you're moving forward correctly. Because remember, ultimately, um, you know, we want to get you moving forward in the right way so that you can reach those long-term goals you're after. So if you want to get started with your app correctly and quickly, head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop, sign up for the free training, uh, and get rolling forward with your app today. All right. I hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.